Hey everybody, this is Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a good one. So let's really start to dig into this. Um, I caught this article about uh, my algo wallet having yet another security breach. And I wanted to actually bring that to light because a lot of people ask me what kind of wallets that I use. Let's just go through my quick list. You have Ledger, Trust, Coinomi, Coinbase Wallet, MetaMask, Binance US, MexC, um, Blockchain, and... Mm, What's that last one I use? Um, I do have a crypto.com wallet, but I don't use it because they do crypto.com, you know, Kronos. Um, I have it because it offered me certain advantages as I maneuver money around, maneuver digital assets around. Now, let's go back to what's going on in that space. If you are looking at different wallets, you should first say, well, is it a secure wallet? Well, that lets my algo wallet out the window, right? Because this isn't their first play at being breached. Then you have to ask yourself, what kind of advantages does this wallet have or offer me that other wallets do not, right? So does it have access to coins that I don't have on other wallets or maybe only one or two of my other wallets. This is the main reason why I choose my wallets and how I choose them because I want to be able to move my digital assets depending on whether or not that particular exchange or wallet offers me you know, a particular advantage. Maybe there's a pairing situation that I actually like using that wallet or exchange. Then I'm also thinking about what exchanges am I using, not just wallets, because when I say wallet, I'm specifically talking about wallets that are non-custodial, but I also pair that with certain exchanges that I wanna use, right? So keep in mind, security is number one. If it can't keep your digital assets secure, you need to not use it, period. Next up, I've been looking at all the cases, the current cases with the SEC. I told you yesterday how a judge, Judge Michael Wiles, was saying, listen, the SEC really doesn't have a case here. I'll give you a day to go back and figure that out. Well, they had their day and he said, well, you know, I'm going to let this deal go through because I'm not seeing a valid reason for it not to. Done. So now the SEC can appeal that case. But truthfully, why didn't you come with your A game to begin with? Now, keep that in mind as you consider people are thinking that the SEC or the case that they have against Ripple is going to come to an end soon, and there's, that there's going to be a judgment soon. And I think there will be sometime this year. I just don't know if it's going to be soon. But that said, they again didn't bring their A game in that case. So there are a lot of reasons why they should lose that case and very few reasons, if at all, that they should win that case. So that's a problem. Then they took it on the chin um, with the Voyager digital assets, right? So I sit there and I just go, I'm seeing a pattern. I'm seeing a pattern from the SEC. They're not bringing an A game because I don't think they have one. That's number one. Number two, they're relying on tossing their weight around versus actually bringing strong cases to the people and to the courts. And you want to know something? It looks like the courts are actually getting tired of it. Because when you look at the three judge panel that are presiding over the Grayscale case, you know, Grayscale is suing the SEC. They're not being sued by the SEC. They're suing the SEC over not giving them approval for their Bitcoin spot ETF. That's a very big deal because it also looks like, again, they have not brought their A game. So and when I look at that whole thing, I sit back and I go, yeah, you're tossing your weight around which kind of punked crack in the pain at $30 million, right? Because they don't have that kind of bank to go up against the SEC. Grayscale does. Coinbase does too, but Coinbase hasn't flexed any, any, of, that, any of that power just yet. I think they might. Um, there are other companies that can, and clearly XRP can or Ripple can. I want you to take a look at Ripple outside of the United States. As a company, they are helping many countries actually get involved with CBDCs. So when you separate the company from the coin, you can see the company is really strong, really strong. So I think the SEC has 
had a lackluster run of cases or spate of cases where they were unable to actually bring a strong case and they thought they would win just because, well, we're the SEC. Doesn't work like that, Gary. Go back and go get another job. I'd prefer for you to go get another job. I'd prefer for the SEC to get a leader that would actually stop and take a more pragmatic approach to governing over or presiding over the crypto space if that's where it's going to be. Truthfully, I think it should rather be in the hands of the CFTC, considering they already do foreign exchanges and those kinds of transactions. So they're probably way better suited. Now, I'm looking at Silvergate and their big problems, right? Silvergate's got really big problems where they have an issue with liquidity. Now, take a look at that. Well, the Federal Reserve in the banking industry, the Federal Reserve is the biggest. There, is a, there are three um, U.S. departments that actually preside over the banking industry, but the Federal Reserve is clearly the largest. They okayed FDC, IC, and examiners to go have a conversation and look over Silvergate Bank. Now, that's a good thing, but the fall of Silvergate can be the rise of Signature. Signatures made moves in the past that say, well, you know, we're only going to handle transactions over $100,000. Now, at first I was like, oh, well, you know, they're pulling back from the crypto space and, you know, they're, you know, decreasing their, you know, their exposure there. And I realized they're not. That's not the play. The play is institutional investors. Because retail investors are not doing, are not moving $100,000, you know, on a whim institutional investors are right and not just institutional investors but accredited investors people that can afford to do those kinds of things i mean think about it you have drake dropping you know hundreds of thousands of dollars on bets on you know fights and stuff so as an example so when i look at you know silver get signature i'm thinking signature can gain from silvergate's demise Right, because they'll get bigger and bigger in that institutional space. That also means that stable coins could also see a rise in usage by normal retail investors. As well as, and I don't think people are thinking about this, there is there are several off ramps for crypto and not just Silvergate Bank. If you're in the United States, whoever you're using, like look at Cash App, you can buy and sell Bitcoin. There's your there's an off ramp. There is an alternative off ramp. You also have obviously different exchanges that might be able to do something, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. You also have a way of leveraging your digital assets as you make purchases with debit cards by Visa, Mastercard all over the place. And you're also going to see a bunch of companies just start to accept crypto payments. You have municipalities considering crypto payments as well. So do I really need the cash or do I just need to be able to pay with either digital assets or fiat? That is where we're headed toward. And the more the government tries to squeeze, the more alternative methods come to light. Anyway, you know what we should do? You know what we should do. We should take a look at the numbers. And the numbers are not pretty, by the way. If you look at, you know, um, what's going on in the, the Bitcoin space at the moment, you start to realize that's not pretty. All right, let's just refresh this data real quick and then I'll get into what I'm talking about. So when you look at, Bitcoin. First, let's go over to the biggest 25 winners and losers, right? OKB is down 8%. So this whole rack, this whole rack is down minimum 6%, right? And within that rack, you have, let's see who makes a sense, who, who makes sense to talk about. Uh, Stacks is down 7%. Optimism down 7%. Optimism is down 7% because they also delayed their fork. So that could be a very big deal. Trust Wallet is down 7%. Not a coin that I play with, so yeah, I'm not really worried about it. But still, it's a big player in the space, so you kind of, you know, could look at it and see what's going on. AMP is down 8%. OKB is down 8%. Uh, 
Uh, let's see who else. Do, 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 do. Singularity was down yesterday and they're down again today, another 8%. So that's something I would be looking at if I think that, you know, Singularity Net is going to come back. If I do think it's going to come back, it's down a lot. So it could be oversold. I'd have, to I'd have to take a deeper look to see that. There's nobody else on this list that I'm really paying attention to. Now, on the winning side, there's really nothing because... Coin Metro, never heard of it. Not even going to pay attention to it. 108 ranked 188th. Yeah, no, nah, I'm good off that. Um, let's see. Voyager is up 56%, but I told you before, I would not be touching the Voyager with a 10-foot pole and somebody else holding it. So that's not that's not going to happen. Bone, that's right. Bone Shiba Swap. Guess what? Up 24%. That's something to pay attention to. Why is it spiked like that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because Shibarium's coming out this week. So now we have to see if the hype is actually going to keep it going. And that's something to contend with right there. That's not a small feat. Immutable X up 6%. And that's it. Everything else, including XRP being up 4%. I told you, I don't really pay attention to 4% rises. From zero, 4% rises. Now, if it had been down and then it came to the positive side, that's something I'm paying attention to because that's actually a nice rise over a longer period, right? So I pay attention to those things just to make sure that I have my eye on the tiger. That's the idea. Something else that people are not paying attention to all that much is the deflationary tone of Ethereum. Look at this. Day, to day by day, we're down. The actual supply chain to date since, you know, since the event has been 48,644 ETH down. That makes ETH more valuable as there's less ETH out there. Pay attention to what's going on. Get deep into your research. Pay attention. Fear and greed index. Yep. We were at 48 yesterday. It's at 50 today. Still in the neutral zone. And I think we could be in the neutral zone for a minute. DeFi total value locked is down to 64 billion. Now. Again, you know, we had had highs at about, you know, 65, 68 billion, and we're down all the way here. But remember, previously, we were all the way up above 240 billion total value locked. I really do think that that will return, just not yet. Looking at Bitcoin again, Bitcoin took a hit, a really huge hit right there. Just follow my crosshairs because I know you can't see my cursor. But you're being basically, you know, looked at as its lateral movement. But again, we've got to have we're going to have to battle back to that 23417. I think it'll be a while because again, Jay Powell, the chairman of the F of the FOMC talks again today this time to the house. Yesterday it was the Senate, today it's the house. Nothing's going to change in the statements. People are just going to have to figure out what's going on. Is it going to be a 25 basis point move or is it going to be a 50 basis point move? Right now, bets are it's going to be a 50 basis point move. So right now, everybody's working that into their algorithms as they move forward. And we have certain non-farm numbers that are going to come out later this week. And then you have CPI next week. And then he'll have enough, not enough, but he'll have some more information to work with. And that's when you'll figure out, yeah, pretty solid on that 50%, that 50 basis point move. That's what I'm looking at. Looking at the big picture, something that we should be paying attention to. Bitcoin was down as low as 21.8. Pay attention. Though, to, again, to me, these are opportunities for me to get in, get in some more. So again, I keep telling you I have a dollar cost averaging strategy where I buy you know, a certain amount of, with a certain amount of money every week. But I also have, take that same strategy and put it toward that I have a certain amount of money that I'm putting on the side every week for times like this when things take a dip, right? I'm not running away from crypto. I'm sticking with it. I'm building on it. And I strongly suggest my kids do the same thing. So do your own research so you can get there. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. Hope you have a good one. If you have any questions, do me a favor, leave it in the comments. And let's see if I can find something for you, all right? And learn something on the way, because that's what's important. Have a good one.